So here is the items which I bought and I've been using. Um, first one is a 6 DOF NACE 32 Rev 6. Um, and the link will be down below for Banggood. Um, again, just basic, standard, does a job and it's a tenner, can't argue. And for the GPS, I used a Bytian, I don't know how you pronounce it, BN880 uh, GPS. Um, does have the compass with this one, however, I've not, I think I've tested it, I used it, um, and I can't remember where this was recommended from, but it bought it and it works fine. So, here's my layout, breakdown, and the setup of the NACE32 with GPS running INAV 1.5. Point one, I think, on the FX61. Painless360 and uh, Bruce from RC Model Reviews has great videos and playlists and getting nays running with GPS. So, onto the INAV settings now and how I went, uh, my process went through getting the GPS set up and then each of the other settings I went through to get it working. So, uh, before anything, GPS first. Um, Popped onto the CLI, um, can't remember got this information from, I think it was the INAV wiki. However, uh, it works, so I'll just go running through the process. Uh, all I did was type in feature GPS um, into the command box and clicked enter, and then I got the message G uh, enable GPS. Uh, I'm just click save, and that was that one. So once that had saved, I went into the ports tab uh, and under UART2, click the GPS um, toggle, enable that and set the baud rate to 57600 and then click save and reboot. Then I popped into the configuration tab, um, scroll down until you see the GPS box. Here I just toggled uh, GPS for navigation telemetry. Uh, which activated that. Uh, protocol was set to UBLOX and ground assistance type was disabled. Uh, so if all goes well, uh, if you click on the GPS tab, you should start seeing information coming in from the GPS. Uh, this can normally take a few minutes, uh, so just bear with it. So next I went to the initial setup and I did the six point calibration on this section which uh, involves putting the board on different axes and then clicking calibrate so next up it's back onto the configuration tab the first up is a mixer so mine's flying wing just like that as per normal next over is the ESC motor features the first one was enable motor and servo output this enables the board to give out the servo and output for wings that's all I know about that one. There's a bit of information on the side using the question mark in a little circle, which will give you more information about it. And of course, there'll be more on the INAV wiki as well. The next one was don't spin the motors when armed, toggle that on. That way, when you arm the board, you don't have a small idle speed for the motors, which is more important with, say, flying wings and other prop setups because you can then throttle down for landing without having the motor constantly spinning. The next one is disarm regardless of throttle value. I had this on because it's something to do with when you are using the AUX and it's worked so far, so I'll keep it on. Most of the settings are left as they are. Say the receiver mode is set to PPM, obviously using PWM or SBUS, select them ones and use that. Uh, once all done, save and reboot. So next up is a receiver. Now there's a million videos out there telling you how to do this. Again, Bruce and uh, Painless360 has done some. And it's all about getting them centered on 1500 value and then the min and the max. For this first test, I had four uh, auxiliary channels set up, which for all the various modes I'll go through later. And one of the other things I did change was the RC rate, I believe, up to one. Uh, on the expo down to zero, bar that, kept it all the same. So this bit is about the PIDs. These are the settings I got from the INAV wiki page. Again, if you follow the fixed wing guide, it does give you recommended setup for uh, fixed wings. And these ones work pretty well on the FX61. I'm not too sure about basic and acro, if they are needed and what they do. Focus mainly on GPS navigation and also the angle horizon settings as my plane will be in uh, horizon mode most of the time. 
and then returns home. I believe it kicks in a horizon as well. It could be angle, I'm not too sure. Onto the molds tab. There's many ways to set up molds and obviously it's to whatever you like and there's a lot of information online about setting these up. I had four auxiliaries because it was, for me, just easy to have many. First one up is arm. It does what it says on the tin. It just arms the board with a throttle so you can throttle up and start flying. Uh, next is horizon, uh, which will allow you to have full movement. However, when you go the sticks, it levels off the aircraft again, which works really well. Great for trainer planes as well. This is air mode. Uh, this works the same as the multi rotors in that if you throttle down, you still have full control of the aircraft, which is great when you're coming in for a gliding landing. And next is uh, nav. RTH, just a return to home switch which will enable it. The next is pass through. Um, pass through bypasses the gyro stability on the plane that's activated when it's armed. I had this on the start so if my pids were wrong I could quickly switch it off and it wouldn't shake the plane up. Uh, the one after this, nav launch, I believe this is the auto launch. I did forget to try this at the weekend so I'll be giving it a go next weekend and see what happens. The last one is beeper. Now on to fail safe. Fail safe I didn't do the stage two, I just kept it with the stage one and I put in what I believe were the right values and what was needed. So when there is no signal coming in, it will set, as you see, auxiliary one, turn to home, and it also gives the value, which is the value set on the modes tab. These are all just guesswork for now. I don't know if they work properly or not. There's some wiring information for the NACE32 and the GPS, which found on dronetest.com. These will be helpful to knowing where things go to. Anyway, cheers for watching the video, and I hope it helps somewhat in setting up the INAV for you with your fixed wing. Any pointers or information you can give us, leave it in the comments, and I will try make a second video and update any settings and hopefully do a bit better editing.